Thank you. The first item of business this afternoon is portfolio questions. The usual, let's have nice crisp questions and possible crisp answers. Number one, Brian Whittle. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what progress it has made on finalising contracts with the DWP for continued delivery of some devolved benefits. Cabinet Secretary. Agency agreements will be put in place in preparation for the transfer of executive competence on the 1st of April 2020, where appropriate. The agency agreements are key mechanisms to support the safe and secure transition of delivery responsibilities from the DWP to our own Social Security Scotland agency. They are a cost-effective way of ensuring that Scottish residents continue to receive their right payments at the right time, whilst we undertake the work required to develop our new systems. Brian Whittle. Thank the Minister for that answer. Um, of the £308 million budget to be spent on Social Security by the financial year 22-23, how much of that benefit will be spent on agency agreements with the DWP for the continued delivery of Wave 2 benefits? Cabinet Secretary. Well, as I said in my original answer, the agency agreements are a cost-effective way of ensuring Scottish residents continue to receive the right payments, and they are cost-effective because they are done at the cost that it is required to deliver that benefit. Of course, if we did not have agency agreements, the agency themselves would be completing those, um, those benefit uh, administration processes themselves. Therefore, it is very important that we continue our work with the DWP to take this forward um, and the details of each agency agreement uh, will be um, uh, analysed, I'm sure, by Parliament in due course as they are published. Question two, Claire Adams. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how many families in North Lanarkshire have received support from the Best Start Grant Pregnancy and Baby Payment? Cabinet Secretary. Since its introduction on the 10th of December 2018, Social Security Scotland made around 805 Best Start Grant pregnancy and baby payments to families in North Lanarkshire by the end of February 2019. Claire Adams. And I thank the Cabinet Secretary for the answer. Best Start Grant paid out more than two months than the DWP benefit it replaced did in a whole year. The third element of Best Start Package, the new school age payment, is open for applications next week. Can the Cabinet Secretary advise what the Scottish Government is doing to uh, encourage the uptake of the three payments under Best Start Grant? Cabinet Secretary. Well, we have indeed seen an exceptional response to the Best Start Grant Pregnancy and Baby and Early Learning payments already. In total, £3.5 million was paid to more than 9,700 families between the 10th of December and the end of February. And as Claire Adamson rightly points out, we will be soon launching the school age payments and we expect a similar good response. But we can't be complacent and there are coordination, uh, coordinated communications plans that are implemented to get the message out on all Best Start Grant payments, health services, local authorities and public and third sector organisations are all um, working hard to raise awareness and I point as one example to my visit yesterday to Sahelia where we discussed what we can do to ensure that um, those uh, young mothers under 18 with no recourse to public funds who will have the um, ability to apply for the Best Start Pregnancy and Baby Payments have specific communication channels that we encourage them to take up what they are entitled and eligible for. Question three, Angus MacDonald. To ask the Scottish Government how many people in Falkirk District have received support from the Carers Allowance Supplement. Cabinet Secretary. Social Security Scotland made 4,755 Carers Allowance Supplement payments to 2,590 carers in Falkirk in 2018-19. Over 80% were eligible to receive the two payments, totalling £442, with the rest receiving one payment of £221, giving a total expenditure of over £1 million. Angus MacDonald. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her uh, reply. Carers in Falkirk District and throughout Scotland make an absolutely vital contribution to our society, and it's only appropriate that they're duly valued and properly supported. The Scottish Government has always been clear that carers' allowance should be paid at the same rate as job seekers' allowance in recognition of their vital contribution. And with our new social security powers, this can finally be made a reality. Can the Cabinet Secretary therefore confirm that carers' allowance supplement will be the same rate as job, se job seekers' allowance? Cabinet Secretary. Well, as the member is aware, people have been receiving carers' allowance in Scotland, have also received their carers' allowance supplement since last year, and that brings their income up to the same level as job seekers' allowance recipients, as the government promised to do. 
Given we will uplift carers' allowance supplement by inflation, I can confirm that in 2019-20, carers will now receive more than the amount paid for job seekers' allowance. We have consistently said that it's unfair that carers' allowance is the lowest working age benefit, and that's exactly why we prioritised our carers by making the carers' allowance supplement the first benefit to be delivered by the new agency, Social Security Scotland. Question four, Jenny Gilruth. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government for its response to the initial findings of the Client and Staff Insights Research Programme. Cabinet Secretary. <clears throat> findings published on the 8th of May show that of those who left ratings, 94% of clients who contacted the agency by telephone were happy with their service, 100% of online applicants and 98% of telephony applicants for Best Start Grant rated the service as good or very good, and the staff survey engagement score of 85% positive reveals that staff are motivated and have a strong attachment to the organisation. There is a long way to go, but these findings show at this early stage we are delivering a system which lives up to our values and principles of fairness, dignity and respect. Jenny Gilruth. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. We should all be proud of these initial findings, which mark a welcome departure from the callous DWP system. Can the Cabinet Secretary advise what further work is being done to ensure we continue to deliver a service which is welcoming and inclusive and reflects the diversity of the people that it serves? Cabinet Secretary. Well, indeed, respect for the dignity of individuals is at the heart of the social security system. And it is great to hear that the people of Scotland have found the system easy helpful and straightforward. That is welcome news. And everyone involved in the delivery within the Social Security Scotland Agency should take great pride from those early findings. And I want to place on record once again my thanks to all the staff for their exceptional hard work. The staff survey uh, data also shows that agency staff are representative of the Scottish work working population. For example, 22% of those who completed the survey reported having a long-standing physical or mental health condition, illness, impairment or disability versus 19% in the working population. As I say, these results are encouraging. They give an indication of progress towards the commitment that we have within our Social Security Charter. Michelle Valentine. Thank you, Presiding Officer. On the whole, it was a very positive report, but one of the um, re findings revealed that only 51% of staff believe that poor performance is dealt with effectively by Social Security Scotland. So can I just ask the, the Cabinet Secretary what steps you will take to ensure that poor performance is identified and dealt with effectively, and does she have a target for the next staff and clients in science re research report? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I, I take that begrudging um, welcome for the work of Social Security Scotland's agency from Michelle Ballantyne. Um, and I think it is important that we pay tribute to the staff who have uh, developed such a key service um, under uh, very busy circumstances. We will look very carefully at all the findings within the, the staff survey to ensure that we are continuously learning and improving. Uh, that is the commitment that this government has, this commitment that this agency has. If only the DWP could do the same. Question five, Graeme Simpson. To ask the Scottish Government what analysis it has carried out of the impact on older people of intergenerational projects. Minister. The National Centre for Intergenerational Practice in Scotland, Generations Working Together, funded by the Scottish Government, promotes inter intergenerational approaches to enhancing and improving the lives of older people and younger people. Evaluation carried out by Generations Working Together, including feedback from older and younger people themselves, tells us that intergenerational practice contributes to giving people of all ages a more positive attitude to ageing, countering and reducing negative attitudes towards older and younger people, and helping older and younger workers to support each other and see the shared benefits of a vibrant community and supporting people's educational development. Graeme Simpson. Can I thank the Minister for that very helpful answer. In 2011, YouthLink Scotland recommended in its report, Bridging the Gap, that the profile of intergenerational practice should be raised. Can the Minister uh, tell us what the Government has done to that end and what we can hope to see in the future? Minister. There's, there's many aspects of the work we're doing, whether it's in social care or housing or social isolation and loneliness, the older people's uh, 
strategy action uh, strategy that I launched just a few weeks ago. There's many aspects of that work in there, how important intergenerational work is. Let's just give uh, maybe Graeme Simpson a wee flavour of the work. I get to do loads of these events, the presiding officer and uh, ourselves have visited a place in Midlothian not that long ago. But just tomorrow, I'm off to Perth Grammar, who will be working with Eden Projects on their inter intergenerational projects to provide a big lunch event. There's loads of these things going on all over the place. There's lots of strategy behind the work that they're doing. Please go and visit uh, and we can have a chat at a later date about whether you know what was happening in your local area but there is so much going on that it's hard to tell you all in one answer but go, go and have a look and then we can have a chat and maybe go and do some joint visits locally ourselves. Thank you. You've just made a date Minister. Question six, Wilton McGregor. To ask the Scottish Government what Apologies. To ask the Scottish Government what measures are in place to ensure that older people are engaged in participating in policy making. Minister. The Scottish Government's Older People Strategic Action Forum, chaired by myself, um, brings together older people's representative groups and other organisations who helped develop a fairer Scotland for older people, a framework for action, which was published just on the 3rd of April this year. Older people's representative groups are also involved in similar groups in health, the Older People's Development Group, and also in housing with age. The Home and Community Mon Monitoring and Advisory Group, which oversees Scotland's housing strategy for older people. So again, many examples examples of the work that's being done. Fulton McGregor. Hey, I'd like to thank the Minister for that response and, and highlight Muirhead and District Seniors Forum, which is a fantastic uh, organisation in my constituency that I've had the pleasure of visiting. Can I ask what support is available to such groups to promote engagement, level of activities among members and reduce social isolation in our older population and not to be outdone by my colleague Graeme Simpson? I would ask the Minister if she would consider visiting the Muirhead and District Seniors Forum at some point in the future. <laughs> That's another date request, Minister. Minister. My calendar's getting very busy indeed, but it's all absolutely worthwhile and I'm really looking forward to it. Presiding Officer, last year I launched a Connected Scotland, our strategy to tackle social isolation and loneliness and build social connections. We are very, very proud that we are one of the first countries in the world to publish such a strategy. Older people can be particularly at risk and this strategy is a step forward, but communities must be able to play their part. That is why we have committed to look across our investment into communities and consider how that can be aligned with the ambitions in the report. So our £500,000 Social Isolation and Loneliness Fund for 2016-17 supported a wide variety of all of the local initiatives and the, 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 the um, groups that I've been speaking about, ranging from basic life skills to creative, creative activities, friendship groups and support for vulnerable communities, and to ensure a successful implementation of the strategy, we have committed an additional £1 million over the next two years to continue that work and ensure that we, have, uh, um, we can back up those commitments with pilot uh, innovative approaches. And I'd be absolutely delighted to visit Fulton McGregor constituency too. <laughs> Jeremy Balfour. Uh, thank you, Deputy President. Can I welcome uh, the uh, Minister's uh, comments and answers? Uh, would you agree with me that social prescribing is a way forward? Um, and what work is she doing with her colleagues within NHS Scotland to make sure that GPs in particular are aware that this is open to them? And would she commit to some kind of further uh, projects, uh, trial projects, to see how they work um, across the whole of Scotland? Minister. Yeah, I, I can say yes to, to, to all of those questions. The Royal College of General Practitioners have been key partners in creating the social isolation and loneliness strategy. We're at this point just setting up the new implementation group. The implementation group has a real focus on care and well-being, which is a, a, a huge part of this. And a big part of that will be social prescribing. We've been speaking about that for the very beginning of this process, and no doubt it will be a, a pivotal part of the success of the project as well. Question seven is withdrawn. Question eight, James Kelly. To ask the Scottish Government how its social security policies take into account the recommendations of the Poverty and Inequality Commission. Cabinet Secretary. Both the Commission and the Scottish Government want to tackle poverty and inequality and social security policies are doing just that. Through the Carers Allowance, our new Carers Allowance Supplement and the new Best Start Grant, we are already delivering significant financial support to those on low incomes and later this year we will also introduce the Funeral Support Payment and Young Carers Grant. This will be an investment of nearly £340 million this year. In addition, we are spending more than £125 million mitigating the worst impacts of the UK Government's welfare cuts, including through the Scottish Welfare Fund and discretionary housing payments. James Kelly. Uh, I thank the Minister for that answer. The recent report from the Poverty and Inequality Commission highlighted the fact that the go Government's rhetoric didn't link up with its actions, with only £172 million 
to indirect out of a £40 billion budget by directed at low-income households. This is particularly acute in areas in Rutherglen, like Farham Cross and Burn Hill. So can I ask the Minister what specific action, like uh, bringing forward the additional supplement, are you going to take to tackle the disgraceful levels of child poverty in this country? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I say some of the measures that we are undertaking um, in my original answer, but there are many others, including, of, uh, of course, uh, the aspects that um, my colleague Aileen Campbell has taken forward in the Tackling Child Poverty Delivery Plan, and also other areas within other Cabinet Secretaries' portfolio, whether it's council tax reduction schemes, whether it's the um, availability of free childcare. On the aspects of income supplement in particular, as the First Minister said in First Minister's questions today, there is a significant amount of work going forward um, at this uh, time to, to, um, to be able to take forward this work. And the update on this will be provided by um, Aileen Campbell by the end of June, as she is required to do for the Tackling Child Poverty Delivery Plan update. It is a significant commitment that the government has made through the income supplement, and it does show our scale of ambition. But designing and delivering a new benefit is a complex task, and that's exactly why we're carrying out the former appraisal work of the policy and delivery options to ensure that we get the right model and target our support to as many children as possible. Mark Griffin. Thank you, President Officer. We heard earlier today that the best start um, payment will be made available to those with no recourse to public funds and the Cabinet Secretary talked about the Young Kira grant and our answer there too. Will the Young Kira grant similarly be available to those with no recourse to public funds? Cabinet Secretary. Well, that's certainly something which I am endeavouring to do. Unfortunately, it is not within the Scottish Government's gift to, to make that decision ourselves. Uh, so discussions are ongoing with the DWP to ensure that they wouldn't put uh, the Young Carers Grant onto the list of benefits uh, which um, I ensure that, that um, a person with no recourse to public funds would not be able to, to, to obtain one of them. So it's certainly something that I'm already taking forward. Um, it's something which this government has, of course, got great concerns about in general is about the, 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 the situation with no recourse to public funds. I hope the DWP will listen again uh, to, I think, a very reasoned argument that we're putting together on this. And I hope it's something that the whole chamber would be able to unite on uh, to encourage the DWP uh, to look at the advantages of supporting uh, young people in particular, uh, uh, particularly vulnerable young people, um, at times where the government could be helping them through social security. Thank you. That concludes portfolio questions and I'm just going to move shortly on to the next item of business. I see everyone's here. Let's let them get to their seats. <laughs>